age, your friend and mine, filmmaker, cartoonist, the world famous, Charlie McMullen! Oh, baby, when you cry, your face is momentary, you hide your blue yes. Happy New Year, ladies and gentlemen. This is going to be great. I don't usually do impressions, uh, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start with one. Now, like I said, I don't usually do impressions, but when Helen Keller said that, <laughs> it's like she was talking directly to me. She was a great woman. So, ladies, I can tell from your nipples, you're noticing my glasses, hot, right? Mm hmm <laughs> Worn glasses a very long time. Who else is wearing glasses? Let's see here. You, how old were you when you first got glasses? Seven. Seven years old? That is pretty young. It's not quite as young as 18 months, because that's how old I was when I got glasses. And one thing that's plagued me my whole life is how did my parents know? How do they know? 18 months, I'm not old enough to talk or walk or anything. I'm guessing they made two appointments that day. Either needs glasses or a helmet. And I'm glad that the first appointment was with the optometrist. It's terrible. When I was 18 months old, I, it was 1981. Think about glasses back then. This was years before fashion designers gave a shit about glasses. Like, they all looked the same. They all had those weirdly shaped lenses, that metal bar that grows, goes like right across the top. It was an adorable, beautiful 18. There was, there was talk about another mic. Okay, let's, well, let's try that one. <laughs> because when the mic cuts in and out, that Helen Keller thing makes no sense at all. Check, check, check. One, two, one, two. Microphone check. Nope, that one's not. So right. I was 18 months old when I started wearing glasses. Now, when you think about glasses back then and how they looked on a baby, it was an adorable baby wearing the glasses of a registered sex offender. Because think about every movie you've seen. If they need to make an actor a child molester, they just whip a pair of those glasses on him. Stanley Tucci in The Lovely Bones. Academy Award winning actor, throw a pair of those glasses on, fucking child molester. I looked like a baby that was going to molest himself. Which I'm sure I did. Even in the womb, as soon as I grew fingers, they just went right up my butt. And you laugh now, but when Special Victims Unit runs out of shit, it's gonna happen. So you guys are going to be drinking tonight? Yes? Big fan of it. I recently had to cut back, though. Uh, like a lot of drinkers, I had my rock bottom moment. Literally, I was doing gay porn under the name Rock Bottom. <laughs> you may have seen Hitting Rock Bottom, Volume 36. It's kind of a Star Wars parody, and it actually makes sense when Greedo shoots first. <laughs> but I had to ease up on the drinking because... Uh, I had a blackout, and uh, it was the worst one I had. I woke up, uh, no two ways around it. I woke up, and my dick was in a cheeseburger. <laughs> so I'm thinking, okay, best case scenario. My friends and I were out. We were all eating, and there was one left over. So I figured, well, okay, if no one's going to eat that one, I might as well try to have sex with it. <laughs> that is the best case scenario. But I didn't have the taste in my mouth like I had eaten the, the night before. So what must have happened, I had a friend of mine take me to, like, through a drive through so I can get a cheeseburger just to fuck it. <laughs> and that's unhealthy behavior. I mean, never before did I look down, see ketchup, and wish it was blood. <laughs> but it was not. You ever wonder what appeared cartoonishly above Thomas Edison's head when he thought of the light bulb?
It's like, I know, what if I, holy shit, what is that? <laughs> that's how it's gonna look, all right. And that's how we have light bulbs from cartoons. Sometimes I wonder, ladies and gentlemen, why, well, okay, I wonder if there are any black people out there that are into S&M. The reason I, I wonder this is because if you ask me to pick a culture of people that probably won't find whipping erotic, oh. <laughs> that might be my first answer. You know, it's supposed to be say my name, not what's your name. What would your safe word be? Toby? That's no good. That's a, you laugh now, but that's a very true fact. Kunta Kinte invented the safe word, and he never got credit for it. I don't think that's right. I think that's bullshit. <laughs> Weird thing I noticed about NASCAR fans. Obviously, they like races, but a lot of them don't seem to like other races. <laughs> Not saying that's true for all of them. I'm just saying if you like NASCAR, it's a good way to know whether or not your ancestors owned people. <laughs> they probably did. People were all surprised by that Duck Dynasty guy. I wasn't really surprised. I mean, they sort of, his homophobic comments were the punchline to like a six season setup, when you think about it. If you guys think that idiots shouldn't have a public forum in which to say idiotic things, we should probably stop giving them their own fucking TV shows. That is just crazy enough to work. <laughs> it's weird. I, I do watch a lot of TV. Uh, I watch a lot of the History Channel because, uh, well, because marijuana is legal now. <laughs> uh, that was the missing ingredient, apparently. <laughs> I love the History Channel now. It got me thinking, though. Like, throughout history, I'm glad there were great people alive to do really great things because I'm sure you guys are aware, our generation... The most useless bunch of technologically dependent, retarded pieces of shit that ever roamed the earth. <laughs> yeah. Just, if it was us alive throughout history, none of that shit would have got done. None of it. <laughs> Not, or it might have got done, but it would, just would have been different. Like, it would have been our shitty version of it. Like, the Declaration of Independence would have been a status update on Facebook. <laughs> it would have been misspelled and shit. You wouldn't have that signature on the document. You would have John Hancock likes this. <laughs> it's not the same. You know, Ben Franklin would have got high, tied the kite to his dick. His friend would have filmed it with a phone, <laughs> giggling the whole time. Would have went viral. Ended up on Tosh.0 oh or some shit like that. You know, nobody wants to read the Twitter feed of Anne Frank. <laughs> Just wouldn't be the same. Through all this, I still believe people are basically BFFs. <laughs> Winky face. Hashtag Nazi is WTF. <laughs> Frowny face. God, that, that's what our generation has contributed to the world is internet abbreviations. Fuck, that pisses me off. If you're on Facebook at 1 p.m. on a Wednesday, just write the word. You got time. You're not late for anything. <laughs> it's weird. Like, I, with all this time people are saving by using internet abbreviations, okay, writing cray instead of crazy is not saving you a whole lot of time. <laughs> but the ones that do save time, I always wonder, what do they do? Like, with all this free time. And then I noticed there was a Honey Boo Boo marathon on TLC. Now I know. It is weird to think that TLC ever had anything to do with learning. <laughs> A&E once stood for arts and entertainment. Now it stands for if there's not a reality show about it, then it's not a real thing. <laughs> That's where we are as a society. Competitive baking. Jesus Christ. There are like four shows on the air right now about competitively making things out of cake. A starving Haitian watches the one TV in that village. That's what he sees. Oh, fuck these guys. 